what can we have here? Hi! Okay, look at, look look at myself. Oh, no. It's, a, it's, a, it's a dream come true. Dream come true. Dream come true. Thank you for doing this today. Oh my god, thanks for having so, me. So, Dust Can't Kill Me. Yes! Walk me through this. This okay. is a musical at NIM. Yes. It's playing right now. Yes. You can go. Come. That's right, they can go. So they're all sold out, but just still show up because okay. there's a wait list and we're getting people in. So just all right. come. So what is, how did you get involved? So I was, um, Serja, our director, was mm -hmm. our assistant director on Spring Awakening. And so I, um, he called me one day and he was like, you know, I'm, uh, these kids from Yale wrote this musical and, and it's, sort of bluegrass all country and I was like yeah I'm in I was like, <laughs> I was like I'm in and uh, so I did a reading for them mm -hmm. and I got to just sing this really cool song ain't no man I don't know if you uh, I ain't no man and um, it's on YouTube um, and uh, I got to sing it and I literally talked to Serge I was like so I hear you guys are doing nymph <laughs> it's like I want in I'm so obsessed with the music and um, so we started rehearsals like four weeks ago. Okay, so um, you've got a nice, fairly good long rehearsal yeah, process. Yeah, it's it not. There's never not enough. enough. Not, not ever enough, enough time. Um, but it's really cool. It's it's a musical about these sort of five, um, these five characters living in the Dust Bowl, mm -hmm. uh, who are all sort of social outcasts. Okay. There's a gay couple. There's um, me and my sister, and and I'm in love with a black man. And there's a lot of sort of social issues that were big. At the time, and and we would hope to have moved past them now. However, um, you know, perhaps. So, and how is it? Because you're probably up close and personal with the audience. How yeah. is that? Um, great, nerve wracking. I like it. How does it go? Yeah, I dig it. I um, I do a lot of shows with my own music, and it's sort of a similar yeah. size venue, so I don't mind like really getting in it. Um, but you know, I also the, when we started Spring Awakening, we were in a yeah. nine seat theater, and so I'm. Yeah. I'm into that, yeah. I'm, I like okay, being, being closer. up close yeah. and personal. And have your audiences been behaving? Really well. No, no, no phones going off in opportunity. We moments. had one yesterday, but it was in the boys' dressing room. So you know what? I can't even. Can't we even can't even talk at that uh, moment. Yeah, exactly. Oops. oops. Hashtag oops. <laughs> oops. Um, and there's whiskey. Whiskey in it. Some so much. Whiskey? Thank God. You're like, do you drink on stage? No, no but you know what? We do have these either. um the, these bottles that like look like whiskey bottles, and they're on stage. But it's water. But um, one of these days, I'm gonna sneak in whiskey. I'm gonna get everyone. Maybe for the final twisted. show. <laughs> I know. At intermission, I get final <laughs> show. You know, <laughs> knocking it back. Somehow. You're gonna see someone like spit it Someone's out. Like, <laughs> the whole thing. That's probably illegal. <laughs> Probably. Now, there's so much Spring Awakening love that's coming oh, on. So course. much Spring Awakening love. So, you obviously made your Broadway debut in Spring I Awakening. Did. How did you get involved with the Deaf West production um, in the very beginning, back in the day? It was it was so serendipitous, honestly. Um, ben Platt is one of my best friends in the world, and we've been doing theater together since we were he's, 11. He's about to do a very big show on Broadway. I'm very excited. I, when I, oh my god, when I saw him, at, did you I, cry? I, he walked on and stage another guy. Like a sobbing mess. That show, Dear Evan Hansen, talking oh. about everybody. That show just makes you cry. That show that he's built. He's to amazing. Kill you. <laughs> he's so amazing. Um, he well, so yeah, so he's uh, him and I. We were like Tracy and Link together. We were the baker and mm -hmm. the baker's wife. We were, we did it all. Um, and so he and I, he called me one day and he was like, "Hey, my friend Michael is doing this production of Spring Awakening." Um, and I, I showed him your music, and then he was gonna, he might give you a call, so just if he calls you, don't be weirded out. And I was like, all right, whatever. So I get a call from this guy, Michael, and he's like, hey, my name's Michael. Um, I'm doing this thing, whatever, and we get coffee, and he tells me all about it, and I texted him later, and I was like, hey, so I'm in. <laughs> I was like, this sounds amazing. amazing. I was like, I want to do this. And so, you know, then months go by, and... And we're in our first rehearsal for this tiny production of, of Spring Awakening, yeah. and half the room is signing, and half of the room is nervous, um, and everyone, and and we made a show, and people and liked it. Just it worked. <laughs> yeah. And you brought it all the way to Broadway. Yeah. How did it feel, that first preview on a Broadway stage? Oh my was God. it just overwhelming? I mean... It felt like make-believe. Yeah. It was like, how did... It was literally a year to the day from the 99 seat theater to Broadway, wow. like our first preview. So it was like, how did this happen? Like we weren't, this was, it, it wasn't part of the plan. Like I think sometimes, you know, when there's a regional production, it's like, oh, this will happen before it goes yeah. to Broadway. But that was like not, not the plan. The plan. Not like the plan. we were doing a show that we believed in because we had a story to tell 
and we loved it. And we got so lucky that people felt what we felt and saw what, what we what got us excited. And so it being on Broadway with with, you know, all the same people, our same family yeah. in front of all these people that were reacting in, in nice ways. Like it was just shocking. Everything about it was like Amazing. Yeah. Now we have something in common. Oh. So my dad is involved with musical theatre. Really? He is. Um, and your dad, Peter Gallagher, yes. obviously has done a lot of Broadway. Yes. Did you ever run away from like, run away from theatre and think, no, no, I don't want to do that? Oh, or did tried. you just love it? <laughs> um, I no, tried I to. And look where I am now. Right? I know, I'm right? We're both under Broadway. Like Broadway. Broadway. <laughs> Exactly. Um, but, um, I mean, did you react a bit and think, no, no, I don't want to do the theatre, I'm going to step away from acting, I'm not going to go there, or, or not? A little bit. I yeah. did. I really ran towards music. Um, when I was, I mean, I also never shut up. I started at three years old singing and dancing and putting on shows, and, um, and I always loved it. When I was 12, I actually saw, I signed up for like one of those casting websites, and I saw this thing for um, Camp Rock. Um, <laughs> and I remember reading like the description, it was like, Mitchie, 16, she sings, she writes songs, like all these things. And I was like, well, this is meant for me. Nice. I was like, this role was Maybe. written for me. Um, Disney didn't agree, mm -hmm. um, but, but, but it's fine. Like, I don't hold it against them. It's Honestly, okay. It's You're fine. The but I called my dad into the room. I was like, dad, I have to audition for this music. No, really? no way. He was like, you're a kid. You have one chance to be a kid, be a kid. And um, we got in this big fight, so I wrote him this song called I'm Okay. And then he was like, all right, she's going to end up doing it anyway. Like, I might as well support fine, her. Fine. Um, but so I, I was always going to do something yeah. on a stage. But then I got really into to music and, and writing songs. So when I, it was time to go to college, um, I went to study music. And then, um, but I, yeah, so I guess I, I went a little bit to music. But then I, there was nothing you that just, was ever going to keep me away from musical back. theater. <laughs> Like, I'm obsessed with it. Do you, cause how old were you when Spring Awakening first came out? Um, the original? Original. I was 13. So yeah. did you listen to it then or did you oh, not? You did. Oh, yeah. I saw it um, on Broadway. Kyle Ryabko was the lead. Okay. Um, and I was like, oh my god, he's so dreamy. I had such a crush on him. Um, Have you met him now? Yeah, well now we're really good friends. Yeah, as a, funny yeah, dreams come true, everybody. <laughs> dreams come true. So now that's true. It's true. Um, and so, yeah, I, I remember seeing it and I actually remember hearing Dark I Know Well and I was like, there's a place for like voices like mine, which are like ragged and <laughs> like I sound like I've been smoking since I was two years old. Um, but I was like, there's And a, that's bad people. Yeah, don't bad do Bad light it. at don't No, no, it. no. Yeah. You can sound like that even without doing it. Exactly. Don't smoke. Um, but I, yeah, so I just was like, oh, there's a place for voices like mine on mm -hmm. Broadway. There's a place for all of the things I love, rock music and acting and dancing and all these things. So it like changed my life. Um, and actually, Duncan and Stephen gave me my very first professional job doing another workshop of theirs. And so so it's like, it's all meant to be. Uh, no, this is a fun. <laughs> Look at Bonnie. Can I, Bonnie? You're so Bonnie. mean to me. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <sighs> so we're rude. not. We're not very rude. So very rude. rude. So very rude. rude. <laughs> um, <laughs> We have, however, been getting a lot of love. Oh, yeah. A lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of spring waiting love. Um, okay, so um, talk to me about any dream roles you may have for Broadway. Have you got anything that you would absolutely love to do? I really want to play a traditionally male role. Okay. Um, I really yeah, want to do that. They're doing that more now in London. That's yes. coming out of the UK, the Donmar. They're doing a lot yeah. of that. I am... Um, I don't know what, which, um, but I, I, that's always been, a, I think that would be just such a fun challenge. And also I love, I want to, I want to keep doing new shows. I yeah. think there's something so exciting about being with something from the beginning while it's a baby. I love that idea. So I don't know, maybe it's haven't been written yet. It's, 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 it's all about people you're working with. Yes. Um, this is another good favorite, uh, favorite question from Live at Five is on stage mishaps. Oh God. Have you had any? Oh maybe God. With a whiskey, no whiskey drink. I'm a mess. <laughs> I'm a real mess. There was a tally um, during Spring Awakening. Really? I fell on stage. Oh, I'm oh. a mess. I'm, I'm, I'm really, yeah. I don't know why they let me on stage. Um, one time, this is my favorite moment. I was, um, there was a point in Totally Fucked where it was during previews. It only lasted two shows, and I think this might be why. Um, I, where it was like during the blahs, I like jumped off stage, and then we would run up the aisle, up to the balcony, and be there for the blah, 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 blah. And then we ran back, and then we were supposed to like be in people's faces. And so I was like in someone's face, like on my knees, and then I was like, oh my god, I have to hit my mark at the stage in like literally two seconds. So I just kind of pivoted, 
which had me essentially in like a runner start down a raked <laughs> hill and I just bolted and there was this moment where I was like oh I'm not gonna stop like I'm not gonna stop I'm not gonna stop and I looked and Steven Sater is like right here and he looked at me with this like look of terror like oh my god she's gonna die and I just remember like all right I can stop drop and roll and like maybe knock a couple people out <laughs> or I can just like knee slide and like try and pivot and so I did that and like I hit my mark, by the way. Well, I nailed I mean, it. This is a professional. Nailed it. <laughs> nailed it. And I literally, like, then I, you know, I get up on stage. My tights are, like, ripped. My knee is, like, bloody. Oh, like, it's yes. such a mess. But then I, I told Spencer after, because it's previous, so he was still there. I was like, I'm so sorry. Can you, can you believe I fell? And he was like, oh, I thought that was a choice. He was like, I wasn't going to have you keep it, but I thought that was a choice. And I was like, Yes! <laughs> See, like I nailed it. See, that's the way you do. Okay. Um, <laughs> so I uh, well, always try to bring back to the show that yes. we're here to talk about. Yes. Um, so Dust Musical. Yes. What do you hope audiences take away from it? Those that come and see it. Well, one, the music's awesome. So okay. I, but I think that no matter what, you're going to leave the theater actually singing the music because it's like catchy and it's fun and it's great and it's amazing. But that'll just happen. Um, it's, you know, really, I think at its core, it's, it's about, it's a show about what happens when you don't get out of your own way. And you kind of, um, every character is, you know, you think that you're fighting against other people. You think that, you know, other people are standing in your way. And you think that these people, these outside forces are tearing you down. When in reality, it's, it's all you. It's all on you. Mm -hmm. It's your inner voice. It's you telling yourself you're not good enough. This is what people will say. This is what people will think. And that's always going to be your worst enemy. And in this show, it really comes down to that. It's like, well, what's going to happen if I don't get out of my own way? Okay. You know, you're you're the only one that can kind of stop you from doing anything. And so for me, this show is, if you can learn to get out of your own way a little bit when you walk out of the show, well, we'll incredible. have done our job. Everybody. <laughs> yes. Catherine Gallagher, thank you so thank much you. for joining us. Everybody get yourselves to Nymph. Um, and we will see you on Monday as it's Summer Friday tomorrow. Have a good weekend, Live at Fibers.